Hello, my name is Chris Clements and I'm a funeral director and today I want to talk to you about how the process of cremation works. So when a family comes and chooses uh, the disposition of cremation, the first thing that happens is they come in, they meet with us and we sign some paperwork. So for cremation to take place, there's three documents that have to be uh, signed. So one is a burial permit from the government, a form four from the government, and then the cremation authorization paperwork from the family. So once we have those three documents, then the cremation can take place. So when the family's in the arrangements office with the funeral director, we're choosing um, a casket for cremation. So in Alberta, it is law that uh, someone needs to be cremated in a container. So it could be a, a pine box and it can go up from there um, but there's many different options, but there has, the body has to be in a container. The purpose of the container is to help us place the body into the cremation chamber with dignity. And that's why we do that, and that's why it's required to have that. Once the family chooses a casket for cremation, uh, the next step is to decide, uh, are you doing a viewing? And when's that viewing going to take place? And maybe there's not a viewing and that's okay as well. We always encourage people to view. Um, it helps with the closure process. One option that people aren't always aware of that you can do here at the crematorium is you can have a witness location. We have a window here. People can see their loved one if they choose to, to be placed into the, the retort for cremation to take place. What a witness cremation often can help do is it gives you some closure, a way to say goodbye. You see the body going into the chamber and that is, that is kind of a final closure for some people. Um, things to know when the body then is ready for cremation, there's a few things. The body has an ID tag placed um, from the funeral home on it. And then when it comes to the crematorium, there's little discs that stay with the, with the cremation as it goes through the process. Now these, these discs have an identification number on them and the name of the funeral home. This way, uh, anytime down the road, if anything happens uh, and someone, say, loses the cremated remains, um, then if they're found, that disc is, is with them and that can identify it. Another thing that happens is we take digital fingerprints of, of your loved one. And what we do with that is if the family chooses later on to get some jewelry or an ornament, for example, you can have that fingerprint put on those things. And that's a keepsake to have for years to come. Um, as we go through the process, when the body arrives at the crematorium here, um, there's a final ID check, so it, it's verifying, is this the body, is the paperwork match up, um, is the ID tag on the body, and at that point then the ID tag is taken off and verified, and then we verify does the, the, the disc and the numbers match all the paperwork, and at that point then we take the body and it's placed into the crematorium. Now we use um, a cardboard roller and that is placed in there as the casket rolls in on that so it rolls smoothly on the, on the floor in there. The door is closed, the unit is turned on. And now when the unit gets turned on what we have is we want to preheat it so below the unit on the floor underneath is uh, the afterburner and we heat up the unit first up to about 1300 to 1500 degrees in there. And once the unit is up to temperature, then the main burner comes on, which is uh, on the top. Once we have the main burner on and the cremation is, is going, we, we monitor the temperature of the cremation. We want to maintain the temperature in there between about 1600 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. That way uh, we eliminate um, any chance of the machine smoking and causing smoke to come out because the way the unit works is the, as as the burning is taking place, the, the emissions and the exhaust goes out the back of the unit and it goes down underneath the unit where the afterburner is and that afterburner is burning off any particulates in the air. And so that, the air does a U shape before it goes up and out the stack. And the purpose of that is to create more time to burn everything off so then it's coming out cleanly out the stack. And, and that's what we want to have happen. The average cremation takes between two to four hours depending on if the unit's already warm and the size of the body. So when the cremation is cooled down, the cremated remains are swept out of the chamber, they're put into a tray, and at that point when they're cool enough, they get processed. And what the processor does is it just brings them down to a more finer state. That way they're placed into the urn, into a bag, and then placed into the urn. That bag is then um, wrapped and sealed with the ID tag on it, 
and that way we always know whose they are. Then the urn and the paperwork, which always stay together, go back to the funeral home and uh, the family has is, is been notified to either pick up the, the urn or uh, we bring it to the service if there's a service to follow later. So this is the process of cremation um, in a short version. If you would like more information or if you have questions, feel free to give me a call and I'd love to answer those for you.